So the Crown Tundra has been out for almost a month now, and I have some thoughts. So let's talk about it. If you like discussions like these, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And if you like this video, leave a like. So first off with p &E, he's an interesting character because from what I've heard, people have different experiences with him. And so he's more like, he's more like a Rorschach test toward what kind of father you had, what kind of father you would have liked to have. <laughs> I personally did not enjoy him. He brought back some uh, PTSD flashbacks, but I can understand why people have positive experiences with him. He is a very overzealous father toward his daughter, Peonia, and he, he's been strongly hinted to be the brother of President Rose. When we first meet him, it is right after you get out of the train station and I don't like that they force you to conversate with him and Peonia. You literally cannot enter the wild area until you intervene with their, with their little argument. What I would have appreciated more is if they made it optional. Like, uh, you can't actually go on to start the story until after you intervene with uh, what they're dealing with and instead you get to explore all the crown tundra all the areas all the pokemon available to it except for the pokemon that are relevant to the story in which peony anyway is a part next we have the dynamax adventures these are interesting i've heard people compare these to battle factory and now that i think about it i i can see that and I have mixed feelings on this aspect only because you have to suspend your disbelief because they talk about how your Pokemon shouldn't be exposed to the Dynamax energy in these tunnels, it's harmful to them, and yet you're allowed to walk away with Pokemon that you catch in those caves. These Pokemon have been exposed to this Dynamax energy since birth, and what's the difference between them? and your Pokemon in this case. Aren't they more dangerous since they pr pretty much have constant access to Dynamax energy and can probably Dynamax any t anytime they like, regardless of whether you have a hotspot. But I guess they, they just wanted to slap together a quick reason to make an excuse for why you're not going to be able to use your Pokemon in this particular raid situation. Uh, which is fine. You get a variety of Pokemon. Some are useful. Pretty much actually all of them are useful. You just have to figure out how they're useful. And it takes... Whew, it takes practice. But eventually, you know, you'll get the hang of it. My first experience was actually choosing a Pachirisu because I thought, you know, it has a steel typing. And steel, nothing is immune to steel. So if all else fails, at least I'll have access to a steel move. And I did. I mean, Pachirisu learned Iron Head and I came across a water cloud. And unfortunately the Pokemon in the water cloud was a freaking Quagsire. And I will learn later that if you look closely at the clouds, you can see silhouettes of the Pokemon that will be there and avoid this horrible situation that I had to endure. I was pretty much using Poison Jab endlessly against Quagsire to poison it to do some consistent damage. And not one time did I score the poison. See, that's an experience that was a learning experience that I found could be enjoyable over time once you get the hang of it. And that was only my first time. I've only done Dynamax Adventures once, but I'm open to do it again. Next, we have some further scrum dilly um, just lore building in the form of <laughs> the only town in Crown, Crown Tundra. I forget the name of this town, but they are pretty much the descendants of Calyrex's original subjects. They have a little statue for Calyrex, and it's kind of adorable. And Peony has his base, his home base, in this town. And the people are, are friendly. The mayor is kind of creepy, but not not 
in a way where he means it. It's just the appearance they gave him that makes him creepy. And this portion of the story can be incredibly frustrating, but well done, Pokemon Company. This part of the Crown Tundra reminded me of the old days of, uh, of going after legendaries that aren't on the box, where there's a bit of a puzzle for you to figure out, and they do not necessarily hold your hand in the in your process of solving it so as i said peony's home base is in this town and he starts you on your journey to go after the other legends that are i guess i would say native to the crown tundra there are three quests from peony and actually there's one from professor juniper but we'll get there from peony you get a quest where you go after the three golems that originated in hoenn Reggie Ice, Reggie Steel, Reggie Rock. There's the second quest where you go after the legendary birds, or rather their Galarian counterparts, being Zapdos, Articuno, and Moltres. And finally, there's the part of the quest where you tackle getting Calyrex itself, all of which are puzzles in their own right and they can have you pulling your hair out if you don't know where to start and in this aspect i had trouble i had so much trouble with the beginning of calyrex because i understood one hint but there is one glaringly obvious thing you have to do to follow up with that and i will i will put it this way peony is no help in this matter Hopefully this hint helps you out. Peony is no help on this matter. With with Reggie Steel, I had trouble understanding the the hints only because I felt like it should have been deeper than it was. If only I could show you a recording of me catching a bronzong, <laughs> riding my bike having Bronzong follow me to the Registeel Simple and doing everything I possibly could to open this dang temple. Eventually, I had to get some outside help, and when the outside help came, I felt like an idiot, but, but, in my defense, I blame the Pokemon Company for this one. You might agree with me once you get there, so look forward to that. And finally, we have the Galarian Birds which you meet at their tree, which is very similar to the tree from Hon Honeycomb Island in the Isle of Armor. So I actually thought you'd meet them there for some reason, but no, they have their own tree and it's better. So the Glarian birds are their own form of nostalgia for those of us who have played in generation two. It's a mechanic that happens in Generation 4 as well, and I think that's the last time you see this mechanic in play. I'm not going to spoil the surprise on that front, but I was not expecting it when it happened. Catching these birds was an experience in its own, and I'm so glad Pokemon Company went with this choice because and it added on to the adventure that was the Pokemon journey as a whole. Unfortunately, I don't have any experience with the the World Star Tournament. So, like I said, it has been almost a month and I'm taking my sweet time with it. So I'm sorry to those who were looking for my thoughts on that. But the selection of Pokemon overall, I appreciate. And with the Crown Tundra DLC active, they unbanned all the um, competitive Pokemon that they just banned last month so that was it's interesting having a mess of pokemon to choose and it already looks like the meta settling a bit but from my experience with the meta it's not stale yet there are pokemon showing up way more often than others but i don't know I like seeing Mimikyu again. Now that I have a way to deal with Mimikyu, it's not its not bad seeing Mimikyu. I don't feel like it's the most broken thing in the world. Gal Galarian Darmanitan, I have a love-hate relationship with that thing, but it's here. Still no sign of Dracovish yet. My overall thoughts on Crown Tundra were positive. 
as you heard i had my gripes but they in no way detracted from my experience of this dlc i appreciate it pokemon company feel free to keep it up and i can't see i can't wait to see what you come up with next if you guys enjoy discussions like these don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like the video please leave a like and thank you for watching we'll see you next time out of your out of your mind. Step, 